Chapter 1. Understanding Today's Teenagers Teenagers didn't even exist 70 years ago. Well, sort of. At least they weren't given their own separate generational distinction until the recent past. The word teenager first came into popular use around the time of the Second World War. Though many changes have taken place since the first teenagers arrived formally on the social scene, there are plenty of similarities between the teens of the 1940s and those of the 21st century. From the early days of emerging teenage culture to its contemporary counterpart, the underlying themes have been the same, independence and self-identity. Throughout the years, teenagers in our American society have been active in searching for their identity while trying to establish independence from their parents. Neither of these themes played too loudly in the pre-teenager era. Before the Industrial Age, teens worked on their parents' farms until they were married and were given or inherited their own acreage. Identity was not something that teens sought. He was a farmer from the time he was old enough to work in the fields. The adolescent boy or girl was a child until he or she married. Then the child became an adult. The Search for Independence and Identity Until the early 1940s, independence was unthinkable until the adolescent was married. However, a lot of that changed with the coming of industrialization. One's identity became more a matter of choice. You could learn a trade and work in the factory, thus becoming a machinist, a weaver, a cobbler, etc. Independence was also more of a reality because securing a job could mean moving to a neighboring village where, with monies earned, one could establish a separate residence from parents. Thus, the larger cultural changes became the backdrop for an emerging teenage culture. Since the 1940s, teenagers have followed this paradigm of developing independence and identity but they have done so in a rapidly changing world. One by one, electricity, telephones, automobiles, radios, airplanes, televisions, computers, and the Internet have expanded the possibilities of developing new styles for seeking independence and identity. The contemporary teenager lives in a truly global society. Interestingly, however, his focus continues to be upon himself, his identity, and his independence. There will be much more about this later. The places where the teenager expresses independence and identity have changed through the years, but the means continue to be basically the same. Music, dance, fashion, fads, language, and relationships. For example, the musical genre has expanded through the years from big bands to rhythm and blues, rock and roll, folk, country, heavy metal, rap, and so forth. The teen continues to have much more variety from which to choose. But you can be certain that, no matter what, the teen's musical taste will be different from that of his parents. It's a matter of independence and identity. The same principle is true in all other areas of teenage culture. So what characterizes the contemporary teen culture? How is your teenager similar to and different from teenagers of other generations? Then and now, five similarities. 1. Facing physical and mental changes. The basic challenges facing today's teenager are very similar to the challenges you faced when you were a teenager. First, there is the challenge of accepting and adapting to the changes that take place in the teen's body. Arms and legs, hands and feet are all growing, sometimes at a disproportionate rate, producing the reality of teenage clumsiness, which can be a source of extreme embarrassment for the teenager. Sexual characteristics are also developing, which may be both exciting and anxiety-inducing. And what parent has not felt the pain as they watched their teenager struggle with that most devastating of enemies, acne? These physiological changes spur numerous questions in the mind of the teenager. I'm becoming an adult, but what will I look like? Will I be too tall or too short? Will my ears protrude too far? 
Will my breasts be too small? What about my nose? Are my feet too big? Am I too fat or too skinny? The parade of questions marches on and on through the mind of the developing teenager. The manner in which a teenager answers these questions will either have a positive or negative effect upon his or her self-identity. With this physical growth, there is also an accompanying intellectual growth spurt. The teenager is developing a new way of thinking. As a child, she thought in terms of concrete actions and events. As a teenager, she begins to think in terms of abstract concepts like honesty, loyalty, and justice. With abstract thinking comes the expanded world of unlimited possibilities. The teen now has the ability to think about how things could be different, what a world without war would look like, or how understanding parents would treat their children. The world of expanded possibilities opens all kinds of doors for self-identity. The teenager realizes, I could be a brain surgeon or a pilot or a garbage collector. The possibilities are unlimited, and the teen may envision himself in numerous vocational settings. 2. Entering the Age of Reason Adolescence is also the age of reason. The teenager is able to think logically and to see the logical consequences of different positions. This logic is applied not only to his own reasoning, but also to the reasoning of his parents. Do you see why a teenager might often be perceived as argumentative? In reality, he is developing his mental skills. If the parents understand this, they can then have meaningful and interesting conversations with their teenagers. If they don't understand this, they can develop an adversarial relationship, and the teenager must go elsewhere to flex his newfound intellectual muscles. With this rapid growth in intellectual development and the gleaning of new information, the teenager often believes himself to be smarter than his parents, and in some areas, he may be right. This advanced level of thinking leads the teenager into a whole new arena of challenges in the field of social relationships. The discussion of ideas with his peers and listening to their point of view gives rise to new levels of intimacy on the one hand and opens the possibility of an adversarial relationship on the other. Thus, development of cliques, small, close social groups among teens, has far more to do with agreement over intellectual ideas than it does with things like dress and hair color. Teens, like adults, tend to feel more comfortable with those who agree with them. 3. Confronting Personal Morality and Values The intellectual ability to analyze ideas and actions in a logical manner and to project outcomes of certain beliefs gives rise to another common teenage challenge, examining the belief systems with which one was raised and determining if those beliefs are worthy of one's commitment. Were my parents right in their views of God, morality, and values? These are heavy issues with which every teenager must wrestle. If parents do not understand this struggle, they will often become a negative influence and actually push the teenager away. When the teenager questions the parents about basic beliefs, wise parents welcome the questions, seek to give honest answers in a non-authoritarian manner, and encourage the teenager to continue to explore these ideas. In other words, they welcome the opportunity to dialogue with the teenager about the beliefs that they have espoused through the years. If, on the other hand, the parents reject the teenager's questions, perhaps heaping guilt upon him for even thinking that the parents' beliefs may be incorrect, the teenager is forced to go elsewhere to share his questions. 